Welcome back once again to the CPL Newsroom presented by Volkswagen to the third of our 2024 CPL season previews. Charlie O'Connor Clark here with Mitchell Tierney. I think I pointed the wrong way on the screen if you're watching that, but if you're on, uh, if you're listening on the podcast, don't worry about it. Nothing went wrong. Um, anyway, if you've worked it out by now, we're going in order of the 2023 CPL standings. We've done Cavalry and Forge. That means today is the Halifax Wanderers, who obviously finished the season with uh, the same number of points as Forge 42. Uh, I think it was the fourth tiebreaker of the away goals that uh, that landed them in third. Uh, you know, I guess it's just kind of the way that it, the way that it worked out last year. Anyway, a very strong 2023 for the Wanderers under Patrice Geyser. I am putting 10 minutes on the clock for our five questions about Halifax. Mitchell, question number one: After such a successful uh, 2023 season. How did the Wanderers prevent a drop off in 2024? Yeah, I think it was huge that they were able to to keep their core. Um, I, I think that you know there was the potential that a lot of these players could have moved on because they were so good in in 2023. You look at like a Zach Fernandez, Daniel Nimick, even Kale Lowry uh, reportedly had some interest. Lorenzo Caligari, like you go throughout that lineup, and it is surprising that they kept so many incredibly influential players from last year so that's a that's a big one for them um and i think you know the next one is is with any team you know you just have to have that little bit of tactical evolution teams have tape on them now um there are a lot of things that i think eventually they picked up on in terms of halifax last year you know building out of the back different things like that and we're able to to frustrate them a little bit but uh if this team can you know uh, be tactically flexible and and take a few more steps forward um, that that'll help them. And again, I think recruitment wise, they've added a lot of exciting new players and strengthened a lot of positions. So um, that's always going to help as well. You have that familiarity and you build off it. Um, there, there's a lot to like about what Halifax did this off season. A hundred percent. I think one thing to remember, and I was at their training last week, their, their preseason tour, I spoke to Patrice Geyser and I was like, you know, that last year you guys, exceeded your own expectations and i think they're very open with that they didn't expect to finish tied for second on points in their first year under him with so many new players coming in but they bought in so quickly now it's tempering expectations a little bit and and understanding that this league is very competitive and obviously things came together very quickly they can't expect a similar jump all the way to the top of the table immediately but i think it is still you know becoming that more cohesive unit they're i think they've spoken about you know, killing off games or a lot of games where they would kind of go up one nil and maybe look to see out a game at that scoreline. And sometimes it would work out some very often. It wouldn't though. They would, uh, they would give up a later game, especially earlier in the year. Um, they've spoken a lot about that start to the season. It took them what, nine games to win a game last year, even though they drew six of their first eight, it took them a very long time to get that first win. Uh, and I think that's something that frustrated them. And, and then again, it's just, having more of those moments they saw the end of 2023 at the wanderers grounds a packed house for their first home playoff game against pacific it didn't go their way they lost to pacific they hit the woodwork i think twice in that game uh instead what was it, it was tiago coimbra and, and riley ferrat so they know that they want to get back to that moment and they want to get beyond the moment so there's obviously plenty to motivate this team uh, and i think they are very realistic with how difficult it is to get there and I, and I don't think there's going to be you know any resting on laurels for this club in 2023 question number two one of the things that they they're certainly going into this year with a focus on is can they improve away from home it took halifax until i think july 30th at york Lions stadium to win their first away game last year they were very very good at home but mitchell can they and how do they improve their road form well, I mean, if they had better road form, uh, they would have been at least in second and they would have been playing, you know, uh, against Cavalry uh, in that one, two game. And, you know, who knows what would have happened there and how different things could have been. But yeah, I think it was just two away wins last season, uh, a bunch of draws. So, you know, they, they were competitive, certainly away from home, but. I think first and foremost, it's just experience. Uh, I mean, it wasn't just the players, obviously, who were learning what it's like to travel. Um, you know, it was the coaching staff as well. They were used to League One Ontario, used to these short bus trips, um, that kind of thing uh, across the province where now 
you've got to go coast to coast and and deal with all of the different activation and, and everything and preparation that goes into that. So now having a, a full season under their belt of learnings in terms of that, I think we can expect better from Halifax this coming year. But I do think that's probably one of the biggest keys if this team wants to take a step forward. Um, they do need to be much better at picking up three points on the road. And um, yeah, we'll see how they can do in terms of that. Yeah, that's a huge part. We know that playing on the road in the Canadian Premier League is hard. It is very, this is a very, very big country. There are long flights. It's difficult to be, you know, away from home for, for longer road trips, especially if you're on the East Coast and you have to go out to Pacific and Vancouver, what is it, four times a year. And you have to go to Calgary twice a year. And you have to go to Winnipeg twice a year. It is hard to play on the road. And I think now that these players have seen a little bit more of that, a lot of them hadn't experienced it before, even once coming from Europe, like someone like, like even Lorenzo Caligari, travel is a lot shorter in Europe. Um, mm-hmm. I think that now that they know a little bit more about that, they, uh, I, I think that they'll, they'll have a little bit more of a focus on those games. We're uh, running quite long here. So question number three, how do the changes up top for this Halifax team affect the attack? They brought in players like Ryan Telfer. They have brought in Christian Valeski up front. Uh, they've got some more kind of number 10 kind of players in Vitor Diaz and Giorgio Probo. What do you see from this team's attack, Mitch? Yeah, I think that's a, another important part of their evolution. I don't think they had enough consistency uh, at the number nine position last year. Uh, I mean, you know, you saw Morelli come in halfway through the season and then obviously, unfortunately, get injured. Uh, Prutza came in on loan. Uh, you had Coimbra up there. Uh, you had uh, Kalom up there. You had... I think going back to Noah Farso to start this season. So there's a lot of different players there. I think having someone like Valeski, who's consistently up top, it is good. Bringing in someone like Telfer, who knows the league, is important as well. Apparently, Diaz is really impressed in an off season so far and, and gives them a new look at that kind of number 10 position. So again, I think just having different options and having a focal point is, is the main thing for mm-hmm. me here is, is they really needed that. Yeah, I think Valeski is a very important player to this team this year. Having a guy who's who's 30, he's very experienced in the North American game, and he scored goals at every level pretty much. He's been, he scored nine goals in 30 games in USL last year. Um, I think I saw somewhere that his general goals per game you know, over the last few years would have been in the, the top five or so in the CPL if he'd done it here. And I think just having that proven finisher, that guy that you think that, that's going to score the easy ones, for you, I think is very, very important to this team. So on that note, Mitch, who is the new signing that you think is going to be the most impactful for Halifax in 2024? Surprise, surprise. It is Christian Valeski. Um, Again, mm-hmm. I think that was the main piece that was maybe missing for Halifax last season consistently. And, you know, I also think he comes in and Chago Coimbra is an exciting young player, but I, th- I think it's really helpful to have someone like Valeski who's done it for years and years uh, at a very good level to to help him and and help him reach his potential. Um, so, yeah, I think that uh, it's, pre- it's pretty clear who this most important player is for them. Uh, I also really like Julian Dunn. I think that's a great signing as well. Gives them uh, defensive depth, which I, I think they'll need. But I think Valeski ends up being the you know most impact player for them. Yeah, I'm just going to use this uh, this opportunity to just shout out a name that I don't think we've really gotten to yet. It's Jeremy Gagnon Lapare, yeah, uh, who is returning to Halifax after a very good year at York. Uh, we know that he's one of the more experienced and talented central midfielders in this league. Uh, his left foot can put a ball pretty much anywhere on the pitch, uh, including on on a, a winger's foot or a forward's foot. So I think he's going to be very important in that midfield rotation for this team. Uh but also I've heard very good things about Vitor Diaz as a, a number 10 who can kind of play in the channels and play with both feet and look to play those slip passes again to Valeski. Final question. We have you know, just over a minute and a half here, so maybe we can go a, l- a little bit deeper. What does success look like for the Halifax Wanderers in 2024, Mitch? Because for me, I think it's quite simply finish in the top four and win a playoff game, if, if, which is kind of a, a difficult bar to set for yourselves, but I think that's what they internally will feel is where they want to go at least. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it is just kind of consolidating that position among the the league's upper echelon. Um, you know, I think consistency is is big if they can do that over a couple of seasons. And like you said, just, you know, not only reaching a playoff match, but winning one as well. Maybe I'll say winning a home playoff match. I think that'd be special for this club and, and take them mm-hmm. to the next level. Like winning a big game like that at home, um, 
yeah, would be massive. Yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, we've seen them have those big days at home. We saw during a regular season last year how you know electric the Wanderers grounds can get when they win a dramatic game. Like there's that that late one they won against Ottawa. There's that dynamic penalty against Forge. Uh, some of those games in the rain where it you know the photos look like guys are being abducted by aliens. <laughs> like those are the moments that make that club so connected to its community. And I think. You know, I was there for that playoff game against Pacific. You could feel that it was very, very ready to absolutely, ex- the whole city was very ready to explode if they just scored a goal, which, uh, which unfortunately for them, they did not. But I think now having seen that, it's incredible motivation to get back to that place. And, and again, as we said, like, like I think consolidating is a very good word. Like they hadn't been among the top dogs of the CPL uh, and been expected to be last year as the church bells go off on my phone. <laughs> Oh, I thought as it was the, just uh, 10 minutes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> nearly. But uh, as our 10 minutes are up again, this Halifax team impressed a lot of people last year. They will not be surprising anybody this year. I think everybody will know that they're a very good team that they have to be careful of. Uh, and that is their biggest test. So again, thank you very much for coming along for the ride with us here on the, uh, we're not on the East Coast. We're just talking about the East Coast. <laughs> um, but the third of our CPL 2024 season previews on the newsroom presented by Volkswagen. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.